where is my mask? <laughs> and is it dirty? And how dirty? Is it an acceptable level of grossness on the inside of my mask? Because I'm still putting lip gloss on and, you know, foundation. Oh my goodness, I like way overdid the red up there. I think it looks great. <laughs> it's a lot, but it wears off over the day. We're heading into Gander Mountain to see what kind of things you need to get when you first buy an RV. with like the matchy matchy wonder twins activate <laughs> outfit of red i don't know oh i'm rachel and i'm joe and we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds we realized we had so much more energy for activities come along with us as we explore the great outdoors and join us on a brand new adventure and this one's a shopping adventure so hey it's middle of February. People are starting to look at RVs. People are starting to pick up the RVs that they ordered back in the fall. So we figured since we're in the area, we're going to head into Gander Mountain or Gander Outdoors is what it's called now. Right. And go through and find the 10 things that you absolutely need to buy when you get your first RV. Okay, so I think that this is number one. You need toys for the dogs. Now, we need to find absolute necessities for when you're going RVing. Well, then you better be in charge of this list. Okay, now the first thing I do want to say before we even get into this list is I'm going to leave down below in the description a complete list with Amazon links where you can get all of this stuff. And a lot of the times it's going to be cheaper. Also, make sure you go check out our list of everything you can get at Harbor Freight at really good prices. Now, number 10 is going to be a set of chalks. Now, these are the cheap plastic ones, and I highly recommend you don't use these. Get the heavy duty rubber ones because you're going to run these things over and they crush and they're not going to serve their purpose but you really need to have a set of chalks and along with that i also recommend these x chalks if you have a tandem axle trailer because you can put them in between and it really helps stop some of that swaying back and forth while you guys are parked so in the same aisle we've got number nine and that's going to be some leveling systems especially if you have just a standard pull behind or even a fifth wheel camper so first of all you want to have a thing of these this is going to help you leveling it back and forth. And uh, what I like about these, and we actually have a better one that we're going to link down below, but you roll up on it, it makes it a little bit easier. And then also you want some leveling blocks. And I suggest you get a few sets of this, at least two packages through Amazon, because you're going to want them, number one, to level a trailer by driving up on them, but also they're great to put underneath your stabilizer jacks and under the tongue jack so that you don't have to extend it all the way down. Since we are over here, this is just a little bonus one. It's not one of the 10 items. This is a great accessory if you have a two axle trailer or even a three axle, or even if you have a dually truck, because what happens is if you get a flat tire, you don't have to get out of jack. You simply put this under one of the tires on that side and you roll up on it. And now the other tire is up off the ground and you're able to change it out and uh, fix any kind of flat or anything like that. So this is a really good thing. And again, they do have this on Amazon. So I'm gonna leave that link down below. So number eight is some lap sealing. And this is very important. I know you're gonna look at it and go like, that's not any fun to buy, but you need this. Cause here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna pull into a campground. You're gonna underestimate like how low the tree is. And you're going to get a little tiny hole in your roof or maybe a tree branch falls on your something. You want to be able to seal that up because you know when that's going to happen right in the middle of a rainstorm so you want to make sure you have this kind and you need both the self-leveling as well as the one that does it level because the self-leveling is for on the roof to seal around things and the, uh, the, the one that doesn't level is to go on the side surfaces plus you want to go up on your roof every once in a while and make sure everything is still sealed and there's no little holes in there you also want to get the Dicor tape because this is what's going to fix the little holes that you may get in there. Even if you get a hole in like the plexiglass roof or something up there, you know, your little vent roofs, you want to make sure you have this so you can at least not have to end your camping trip. 
one thing is very important look up who the manufacturer of your roof is because you need to get the right one for example we have a grand design imagine they use an alpha systems roof an alpha system specifically says you cannot use this brand you have to use this brand so look that up it's really important i suggest stocking two or three tubes and just keep them in your camper at all times so number seven is another thing that's not a lot of fun but it's a necessity because again this is something that what's going to happen is something's going to go wrong and then all of a sudden you're going to need this and you don't have one and that is a set of fuses you want to get a full assortment so and you can make sure you look and see what kind of fuses you have in your rig as well as in your truck and get them i'll leave links for all the different ones down below it's really important to have these because chances are you're going to blow a fuse something is going to blow a fuse on your refrigerator or maybe your trailer lights go out or something like that and it's a simple fix if you have these but you don't want to be in the middle of a campground and then all of a sudden find out you have no trailer lights or trailer brakes so get yourself a set of fuses so number six has to do with our water system and i'm actually going to lump two different things together first part is a water pressure regulator and i really suggest you get the little bit better one this is an adjustable one so this is gonna tell you what the pressure is, but it also allows you to adjust the pressure so you can either lower it or raise it. Very important to have this, you know, your system in your rig, it doesn't want really high water pressure. So if you put something that's got super high pressure in there, you're gonna start blowing fittings. So make sure you get one of these. Now the next part you're gonna need is the drinking water safe hose. And there's a few different kinds you can get. Like a lot of people buy these. Here's the thing, I don't like these things. Number one, they're a pain in the neck to roll up and this is a short one. And the other thing is if you're in the cold, it gets even stiffer. We got turned on to this hose by Brian from Five to Go. So we're asking everybody we meet, uh -huh. you're going on an RV trip for two weeks. Okay. okay. I know you guys are full timers, but you're going for two weeks. Uh -huh. What is the one item that if you forgot it, you were either going home or running to the store to buy it? The RV. <laughs> That's a really good one. That's like when someone says, what's your wish? And you're like, yeah. for more wishes. Yeah. Um, no, so, okay, so seriously, so. What could we not go and buy? You mean other than like medication? And yeah, 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 just um, like, like. That's a good question. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to secure my position as the profit of the zero G hose. This hose is awesome. As a matter of fact, we're not even buying this hose for our regular house. Cause like this, that's a 25 foot hose and it comes up and then as soon as you're done, you just kind of drain all the water out and it fits back in this little tiny box or whatever you're storing it. I advise you to get two 25 foot hoses. Most of the time 25 is gonna be enough, but there may be a time where you're too far away and you need to have that extension hose. But definitely get the drinking hose and make sure when you buy the zero G, you buy the drinking safe one because there's another one that isn't drinking safe that you're gonna see at Lowe's. So number five still pertains to the water, but we're gonna make it separate because this is super important and that is a water filter. No matter what kind you get, make sure you have a water filter. A lot of the water that's in these RV parks and, and these campgrounds, it's not very good. It's also filled with all kinds of dirt and sediment. Yeah. So you can get a big expensive two part one. You can get one of these little ones that's just gonna get out the chlorine. This is actually, we're actually buying this one today. This is a new product that just came out. We saw it at the Tampa RV show and I'm really excited because it's on sale here. And this is the Clear O2 and it's a dirt guard. So it's got this outside filter. I'm even getting the replacement filter because it's on sale. And you're gonna put this on and that's gonna trap all of the dirt and sediment from coming in. And then you put this up on the inside and that's gonna get your chlorine. So it's like basically giving you a two-stage filter inside of your rig and it's in a pretty compact size. Okay, so before we get to number four, I do wanna say, please do us a favor, take a moment to go down below and hit the like button on this video. It really does help grow the channel. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit the bell button so that you're notified every time we put up another video like this. So number four has to do with Rachel's least favorite thing of the RV and that is the stinky slinky, the whole sewer system. But you own an RV, you're gonna have to deal with the sewer. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not as bad as everybody thinks, so don't really freak out too much. But you do need a sewer hose, so you're gonna have to have a way to get the stinky stuff from the RV into the hole in the ground. So we like the Rhino one. Um, it's a really durable one and it gets really compact. Make sure you get at least 20 feet. You can get two 10 foot sections. Uh, but you want to be able to reach wherever you're going. Also, I suggest if you don't have one, 
buy the kit like this Rhino Flex kit because it comes with the clear elbow. You wanna make sure you have these clear connections on there because as gross as it sounds, you wanna see what's coming out of there. Now, along with that, we're gonna leave it as the same one. You need to get one of these. Some of the campgrounds and some of the state parks, they require you to keep that sewer hose up off the ground. So make sure you have some kind of sewer hose support, whether you do this or you just kind of make something yourself out of PVC pipe, make sure you have some kind of sewer hose support system. So this is an extra one. It's not gonna be like another number. Otherwise we'd have too many numbers and it wouldn't be 10 things but definitely make sure you get some kind of a tank treatment system. Now they don't have the one we like here, which is the Happy Campers. I'm gonna leave a link for that one down below. That's gonna last you the longest and it's gonna give you the best value and it works. Uh, but make sure you get something. These are the Tossins. I don't like these and they're super expensive. Okay, so number three is gonna be some dog bone connectors. And there's definitely going to be a time where you're going to pull into an RV park or a campground, or maybe even mooch docking at somebody's house and they're not gonna have the right connection for your rig. You need to make sure you have a 50 to 30, a 30 to 50, and also a 110 or 115 to a 30 amp because you wanna be able to deal with any scenario you pop into because there's definitely gonna be that time where they're gonna have a 30 amp plug but you have a 50 amp rig or they have a 50 amp plug and you have a 30 amp rig. So make sure you get all of the possibilities. Okay, number two, this is a little bit of a controversial one. I see a lot of people in forums say you don't need this. Get yourself a surge protector, okay? You are dealing with very sensitive electronics in your rig. You have things that control the slides, things that control your you know, washers or dryers if you have that, things that control your refrigerator, your hot water heater. Everything has an electronic control. There are power surges. You're gonna have power surges just because there's not good electrical stuff in the RV park. And also like, for example, us, we live in Florida. We get lightning strikes. All you need is one small strike and now you've just fried out not only everything that's in the rig, like your slide controls, but anything you had plugged in, like maybe your computer or your phone. Most people wouldn't plug their expensive television in their house just into the wall without having a surge guard. Don't hook up your rig without having one. You're talking about $100 to $300, but you're gonna save a lot of money if you have some kind of strike. Okay, number one. This, to me, my personal opinion, some people are gonna disagree, is the most important thing to have, and that is a tire pressure monitoring system. You need to know what's going on with your tires. All these people talk about China bombs and their tires blowing up. I'm telling you, most of the time when you have people who are having all of these blowouts, it's because they're not paying attention to their tires. They're not making sure they're properly inflated. They're not making sure that you know they're at proper temperature. They're not checking the age of the tires. There is nothing better than having the peace of mind to drive down the road, look up at this little screen and see every tire's got the right amount of pressure and every tire is at the right temperature. And what happens is if you have any kind of a leak, it's going to alert you. It's gonna start yelling at you like, hey, the temperature is too high. That means you're gonna have a blowout. Hey, all of a sudden we've lost like 10 PSI in the last three miles. That means you got a slow leak. You can pull over to the side, fix it, and avoid that disastrous blowout. It's an expensive accessory, somewhere between 200 to $400, but absolutely necessary in my personal opinion. Now, isn't this one of the mandatory things you have to have in your new rig? You've got to decorate at least your bed with something cute and trailery. Okay, well, I'm not gonna say that's a mandatory thing, so we're gonna make that the bonus item. We forgot one more thing. What? The most important thing that you need when you're buying a trailer is a great attitude because you're about to have some incredible fun and make some great memories. Absolutely. Well, that's gonna be the end of this video. Now let us know down in the comment section if there's anything we missed. I mean, we only have 10 slots, but maybe you have things that are more important than what our list is. What's on your list? So let us know down below if there's anything else. Maybe we should have made the list 15. Are there any like big ticket items that you feel are super important? Now, please do us a favor, again, hit the like button on this video and also make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell button and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, happy, happy camping! camping.